so probably it is like all the revenues that happened during the last during the current financial year all the revenues during the current financial year all the expenses during the current financial year and the net income during this financial year so it could be a, on an annual basis or it could be on a quarterly basis depending on the requirement the income statement is typically prepared so over a period of time whatever are the revenues and the expenses those are typically taken care of as a part of the income statement so that's the reason in some cases the income statement is also called as profit and loss statement because the net net income is nothing but the net profit the net profit or net loss that is going to come up after subtracting the expenses from the revenues so otherwise also called as statement of earnings what is that the company has finally earned so that's the reason even we call it as statement of earnings more commonly called as a profit and loss statement so this is uh, this is on a broader scale what an income statement is but here comes the presentation or the reporting mechanisms wise right from a reporting uh, perspective here i have to uh, look at ifrs international financial reporting standard as per the ifrs the income statement plus other comprehensive income these two can be combined together and called as the statement of comprehensive income either they can be combined and created like this or the income statement can be presented separately other comprehensive income can be presented separately so either of these presentation formats is very much acceptable but yes i need to know which format the company is typically presenting even a few other accounting standards like uh, us gap also go with this kind of a presentation mechanisms itself and why do someone use this income statement who all can use it and for what purpose as we know the financial statements which are prepared by the company are majorly used by various stakeholders and primarily they can be used by investors or they can be used by some creditors or they can be used by lenders any different kinds of parties there could be many other parties who could be using them probably the investors are more interested in valuation of the particular firm so they will evaluate uh, the profits the losses over various years to finally arrive at the valuation of the firm and probably from a lender standpoint their understanding of the income statement is to assess the company's ability to repay ability to pay interest on time ability to do a principal repayment whenever required so the lenders would evaluate the income statement of the company from that purpose creditors would typically uh, look at from the purpose of again the company's paying capacity so is the company sufficient uh, enough to pay back uh, pay back uh, 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 pay back for the raw materials or for any other uh, uh, credits the company has uh, taken during the short term so all these things are typically uh, going as a part of uh, the income statement now just trying to understand a little bit more in detail now as we know that income statement typically contains only revenues expenses on a broader category right revenues and expenses so whatever uh, uh, something came from the sale of goods and services whatever the amounts the company uh, has uh, 
obtained from the sale of goods and services which are as a part of normal operations of the business. So for an automobile company, the sale of cars, whatever is the amount that is obtained because of the sale of the cars, typically goes as a part of the revenues. But in some cases, these revenues can be adjusted. To the revenues, there could be some kind of adjustment that could be uh, done, especially with expected returns because of warranty, because of defect. There could be some expected returns, means if I have sold some thousand cars, I am expecting 1% of them, which is 10 cars can typically come back which means my revenue will not be for 1000 cars which I have sold. I am adjusting it with 1% which is an estimate that I am making. Adjusting it at 1% of the vehicles that can typically uh, come back and uh, finally uh, reporting the net revenue. Instead of uh, showing the gross revenue, generally I can show a net revenue which is adjusted based on the expected returns of the goods and services that I am selling. So on a broader scale, that is what consists of the revenue. Now when I look at the expenses, it is the cost that is typically uh, incurred to generate the revenue. Whatever the company has incurred as a cost, to generate this particular revenue. It could be cost of manufacturing that particular product, it could be cost of selling it, whatever the company has incurred as a cost during this process to generate this revenue, all of them get treated under the expenses. Broader cost of goods sold, direct costs that are associated with the goods that got sold, any other operating expenses that are there administration, selling, marketing, all these things. Any financial expenses that are there which are more associated with interest payments on the loans taken and any other taxes, all these things go as a part of the various expenses. And all these expenses in the income statement, they can be grouped either by uh, either by the nature, so there could be a, again something like depreciation. Now depreciation is a grouped by nature kind of uh, grouping because depreciation of plant, depreciation of machinery, depreciation of buildings, all of them are typically grouped into one single uh, element on the income statement called depreciation. Or in some cases, it could be function-wise grouping. When I say function-wise, if I look at the finance expenses, all the various loans that have been taken in different forms, the interest that needs to be paid on all the loans is grouped together as a part of finance expense. Probably I call it as interest, but the interest well, for various uh, expenses or probably when I look at cost of goods sold, it's a cost that is incurred with respect to manufacturing that particular product. So in some cases, it is purely based on function. The grouping in some cases, it is purely based on the nature. But some of the things which are directly uh, expected to be present as a part of the income statement going to all these things and uh, from a presentation standpoint it is expected that in a particular income statement if i am preparing it let's say for uh, the financial year ending 2014 i need to even present the same data one per financial year ending 2013 as well now, these two, so whatever are the content, let's say the revenues, uh, again, different subheadings under the revenues, expenses, different subheadings under the expenses, and finally, the net income. 
I have to present it for 2014 as well as 2013. But with respect to the presentation, either uh, this way is also okay where the latest is first and the earliest uh, is the uh, next or even this kind of a presentation is also okay first the earliest year and then the latest year can very well be coming up and uh, from a few formats perspectives also sometimes uh, for expenses expenses uh, people uh, generally uh, show them as negative numbers or sometimes people put them in parenthesis any of these presentations are quite comfortable as long as expenses are subtracted from the revenues to typically come out to the income. Apart from revenues and expenses, we also see something relating to gains and losses also in the financial statements. So whenever I am seeing some kind of uh, increase in benefit, Right? When I am looking at some kind of increase in the benefit, either because of normal business operations, normal business operations or non-normal business operations, whatever is the increase in the benefit that is uh, coming up, that can be treated as a gain. Especially like, okay, I have sold off a machine. I have sold off the machine. Now, there is a book value associated with the machine that is shown in the financial statement. I would have sold the machine in reality at the selling price. Now, what we see is, we'll try to find out the selling price minus the book value. If it is positive, I'll treat it as a gain. If it is negative, I'll treat it as a loss. So this is a gain that is coming because of selling a particular asset. The same way, this is as a part of the normal business operation itself because the machine which I have been using for running my business. Whereas when I look at some investment, I have bought the shares of some company may or may not be from the perspective of doing a business just for exploiting uh, the pricing uh, uh, mismatch. So let's say I have bought the shares of some company and uh, now I am selling off the shares. So whatever the, the profit that I have got, that is a gain but not from normal business operations. So all these gains if it is from normal business operations, it could be treated uh, as a part of uh, operating uh, income, uh, operating gains. If it is from non-normal, I can very well treat it as completely non-operating kind of gain. But all these gains are re represented as a part of the income statement. Similarly, if these kind of things have resulted in a loss, they are represented as a part of losses which means when i have to arrive at the net income finally it is like i look at revenues minus whatever are the operating specific uh, expenses which are uh, normal business related operations any other income that i have got minus other expenses so these are more operating specific expenses which are core business operation specific non-operating income, non-operating expenses and any kind of gains minus losses. All these things put together is going to create my net income. Apart from that, we also see a few additional elements coming to minority interest in the income statement. I also see one more uh, heading typically called as minority interest. Sometimes it's also called as non-controlling interest. Especially if a particular firm, especially if a particular firm has acquired another firm. Let's say A has acquired B. 
but not uh, 100% uh, of B, let's say 80% of B has been acquired. Now, what the accounting rules simply say is, the entire revenues and expenses of B will be clubbed into the income statement of A. Though A owns only 80% of B, the entire 100% of the revenues and expenses of B will be clubbed into the income statement of A. So, which means uh, uh, even the profit wise 100% is clubbed into the income statement of A. But A actually owns only 80% of it. Which means the remaining 20% of B which is not owned by A is typically uh, called as the minority interest. The 20% of the profits of B for that particular year which does not belong to A is what we call as the minority interest. So what we do is whatever is the final uh, net income that comes by when I prepare the income statement by taking 100% of the revenues and expenses of B into A, whatever the net income that comes from this net income there is a subtraction of the minority interest of B. And finally, the overall final net income is going to come up. So, this is one more element that could be present, especially if a company is having some kind of subsidiaries where the stake of the company is not 100% is less than 100% stake, we will see that uh, this kind of additional element for minority interest is also being present in the income statement. Then, coming to the various uh, presentation mechanisms of this, uh, uh, of this financial statements, we can talk about uh, either a single step presentation wherein we just group all the revenues minus all the expenses and directly we come out to the net income. A simple presentation in one single step or we are coming out with a multi-step kind of a process where a bit of more detail out is happening. So here we first look at revenues. Instead of taking all the expenses, we take only cost of goods sold first. The difference will give me the gross profit. And from the gross profit, we deduct, let's say, selling, general, administrative, all operating related uh, expenses. And, if, uh, and even the depreciation, because depreciation is also related to the operating.